Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the macromolecules, um, the structure and function of biological molecules on um, of importance to biology. This is part one of those molecules. So when you're looking through, there are four major types of macromolecules. Um, proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nu nucleic acids. We're going to focus mostly on proteins, carbs, and like lipids, nucleic acids, we will talk about when we talk about DNA. Um, and so a macromolecule is basically a polymer. Remember, poly means um, many and mer means part, so built out of monomers. So mono is one and mer is part, so one part. So many parts built out of one part. Polymers built out of monomers. Um, so lipids technically do not have polymers, which technically means they are not actually a macromolecule. Um, but they are still very, very huge, important molecules to biology, so we're talking about them today. Um, and so the repeating units of a polymer is the monomer, um, and just keep that in mind as we continue to go through. Note, um... Polymers can work using enzymes, which is a type of protein. Um, enzymes speed up a chemical reaction, so um, they're a catalyst. Think of them as something like an oven. Your oven is a catalyst. If you bake a cake, right, and you mix the batter together and you set it on the counter, nothing's going to happen. But when you put it in the oven and turn the oven on, the complete chemical makeup of the batter is going to change and you end up with cake. Um, that's what enzymes do. They take unrelated substances and actually put them together to make a functioning product. Um, so monomers do build together using dehydration reactions. A dehydration reaction is the loss of a water molecule. Technically, one molecule that's connecting will lose a hydroxide, that OH group, while the other loses a hydrogen ion, that single H. And then the hydroxide ion and the hydrogen ion combine to form water, and the other two molecules will bind together. So polymers are broken down into monomers through hydrolysis. In hydrolysis, the water molecule um, is re-broken down into the hydroxide ion and the hydrogen ion, and they squish in, and they uh, reconnect the molecules in the first place. Remember, hydro is water, and lysis means to break down. Um, so this is just a quick diagram of how a dehydration and a hydrolysis reaction will occur. So in this top molecule, you can see the dehydration reaction in A. The hydroxide comes off, the OH comes off, um, and then the hydrogen ion comes off and water is formed, creating a longer polymer. Um, and then, of course, in hydrolysis, the reverse occurs where the water comes in and is added back. So carbohydrates are sugars. Um, so the sugar can be in monomer or polymer form. Sugar monomers are called monosaccharides. So a monosaccharide is one sugar. Saccharide means sugar. Um, and then sugar polymers are called polysaccharides. There are three polysaccharides you will be expected to remember. Um, so do keep that in mind. Um, so this is just the um, dehydration reactions linking sucrose um, um, linking sugars together to make maltose and sucrose, which are two very common um, disaccharides. Di, D-I is two. Um, so disaccharides, maltose and sucrose are disaccharides. So this dehydration reaction links two glucoses together, creating maltose. Or if a glucose and a fructose link together, and you can see the slightly different shape of the fructose, um, you end up with sucrose, which is table sugar. Um, so the major polysaccharides that we're going to be talking about are um, starch, glycogen, cellulose, and chitin. I know it is very tempting to call that last one chitin. It is not chitin, it is chitin. Um, so starch is found in plants, think starchy vegetables, potatoes, corn, that sort of thing. Um, glycogen is actually formed in the liver of animals. You make your own glycogen from the sugars you consume and it lives in your liver. Cellulose is um, found in plant cell walls. It's also known as dietary fiber in the nutrition world. So if a doctor mentions um, dietary fiber, what they're really mentioning is 
cellulose. And chitin is a polysaccharide found in fungal cell walls, so think mushrooms, or in the exoskeleton of insects, um, crustaceans, arthropods, things like that. So exoskeleton of a beetle, the shell of a shrimp, the shell of a lobster. Um, that's actually why it's bad to eat raw mushrooms, because if you can't digest a shrimp exoskeleton, you certainly can't digest a um, mushroom either. And here you can see this lovely little insect is actually getting out of its old exoskeleton and that whole old exoskeleton is completely formed of chitin. Lipids are rarely big enough to be called macromolecules. They don't have the polymers. They don't mix with water. Lipids are hydrophobic and have many hydrocarbons. Now in a hydrocarbon, hydro isn't actually referring to water. It's referring to hydrogen. So a hydrocarbon is a linkage of hydrogen and carbon together. Um, so lipids include waxes and pigments, think like candles, it's also going to include oils. Um, so when we say waxes, think beeswax, earwax, okay? Um, uh, not just oils, fats, the phospholipids, sterilo steroids, there are all sorts of lipids going on out there. And these are those hydrocarbon chains in yellow. You can see everything's just linked together and it makes this little zigzag pattern. And they're connected to usually an alcohol at the end or an ester linkage that allow it to um, combine to other things. So phospholipids are very similar to fats, um, but phospholipids have two fatty acids as opposed to three. Phospholipids are very important to the cell or plasma membrane of the cell. Uh, we'll be talking about that in the next unit. Phospholipids are um, hydrophobic tails and hydrophilic heads so that things can pass through the cell membrane. So water is on the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell, and then the hydrophobic tail prevents things from going through. They look like this. You can see these two linkages. Note that phospholipids have a kinky tail. Yes, it's officially called a kinky tail. Just go with it. Um, and this, of course, is the full molecule of what it looks like up close and personal. Proteins um, come from proteos, which means first. Proteins make the world go round. Without proteins, you can't really function. They have roles in a variety of things. Um, including but not limited to um, chemical reactions, defense, storage, transport, cell communication, movement, cell structure, and support. You can see these enzymatic proteins, defensive proteins, storage proteins like in eggs, transport proteins. They're super, super useful, and we will talk about proteins a lot in the next unit when we talk about cell function and metabolism. The polymer of a protein is a polypeptide. Peptide means protein. Um, monomers are amino acids, which makes it really difficult because all the other ones, you know, if you have a carbohydrate, you have a polysaccharide and a monosaccharide. So here you would think, oh, I have a polypeptide and a monopeptide. Nope, polypeptide and amino acid. Amino acids are formed by DNA and build all of the polypeptides. Um, we actually talk about how amino acids form polypeptides when we talk about genetics in Unit 3. So protein structure, when you look at protein structure, one change in one little protein, you look down here in sickle cell anemia, that um, circle in red, one little change actually is the difference between a normal red blood cell and a sickled red blood cell, and that is the difference between your proteins and your red blood cells floating the hemoglobin floating separately or linking together, making it impossible for the body to carry oxygen properly. People with sickle cell anemia have asthma-like symptoms um, due to that. So proteins are easily denatured, which means broken down. Um, they require specific pH, salt concentration, temperature, um, in order to function properly. Nucleic acids are the basis of DNA and RNA, um, and we will talk about them in unit three when we talk about genetics. Um, the polymer are the polynucleotides, so the DNA and RNA, and the monomers are the nucleotide bases that um, A, G, C, T, and U and RNA. Um, so genomics and proteomics is the study of a whole genome or DNA sequence. The genomes 
uh, may be the same or different species. So proteomics is the analysis of large sets of proteins. So think of the difference of studying what a genome is and what the protein sequences are. So it's nice to know what the genes are for sickle cell anemia, but it's not very useful until you know which proteins are made. Um, there are a lot of applications of this um, in paleontology, understanding human evolution, understanding how human culture works in evolution itself. For example, the short-finned pilot whale and the hippopotamus are the most closely related species alive on Earth um, in their family. Um, because a lot of the other species that link them have gone extinct. It's very important in medical science and making treatments for um, cancer and autoimmune diseases, conservation biology so that um, animals can be preserved in areas. Um, for example, the last white rhinoceros went extinct and uh, genomics allows for scientists to get rhinos into that ecological um, ecosystem so that uh, the rest of the ecosystem isn't impacted and also species interactions. So I would like you to do this for homework even though it says in-class assignment. So using um, figure 5.26 what do you think is the most important advance caused by genomics and proteomics and why do you think this advance is important? Give at least two reasons to support your answer. Um, you do not need to work in a pair though you're welcome to if you want to phone a friend. Um, make sure to use actual reasons and don't say I like it or I don't like it. Um, a few other things to think about with DNA and proteins and evolution. DNA and proteins can be used as tape measures for evolution. Um, similar DNA sequences mean that things evolved more closely together than things further apart. Um, and can be used to trace family lines, relationships between species. Uh, human hemoglobin and primate hemoglobin differ in just one amino acid. Um, it's like the difference between a person with sickle cell and a person who does not have sickle cell, so it's not a very big difference. Um, whereas humans and frogs have 67 amino acid differences in their hemoglobin. Um, so, you know, interesting. Um, if you look at this, you don't have to answer it, but were you sold coho salmon? So if you look at these genetic sequences, you're basically trying to match the labels together. So which line does this highlighted line match? And you'll note it matches the sequence for Salmo Salar or Atlantic salmon, which by the way is my least favorite type of salmon. Um, coho salmon is very good. It's a very bright pink um, and it's a lot more expensive. So if you are told you're getting coho salmon and then you're sold Atlantic salmon, you should be very mad and ask for a refund. Um, and then here is your homework. It's actually worth 12 points tonight. It's very big. It's on page 89 in both textbooks. It's called the scientific skills exercise. You're going and doing something similar to this with the fish. You're going to be matching the DNA sequence and answering the questions.